Hello everyone, my name is Conrad on behalf of Camera Stuff. Uh, good evening to you. And um, yeah, thank you for joining yet another gear review from Camera Stuff. Tonight we're going to talk about studio umbrellas. Specifically, we're going to talk about um, shoot through umbrellas. We're going to talk about uh, silver, gold, and white reflective umbrellas, and also the differences between softbox, softboxes and umbrellas as well. So I'm just uh, waiting a little bit for more people to join, then we can get started. So in the meantime, if you are joining, please do tell me where you're from. Introduce yourself in the comment section and we can get started. Hello, Lochis, how are you doing? Glad to have you with us. So you're becoming quite a regular. I do like it. Thank you so much. Otherwise, if you are listening, yeah, as I said, drop your name in the comments. Tell me where you're from so I know who I am talking to tonight. All right, I see my battery is low as well. Um, yeah, this specific battery that I'm using, I think, yeah, is becoming a little bit of a dud. Yeah, so I may need to change that, but yeah, I'll do that when necessary. But in any case, I think we can get started. Thank you for joining from Secunda. Fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji, fire emoji. Thank you for joining Streetwise. Glad to have you on board. All right, so I think we can get started. Let me get my slideshow. All right, as mentioned, uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, different studio umbrellas. And this is what is on the menu tonight. So I'm going to chat about the differences between reflective and shoot-through umbrellas, the differences between silver, gold, and white reflective umbrellas, and also the differences between softboxes and umbrellas. Now, before we get into that, I think it's a good idea to get into certain terminologies, just to get that out of the way, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. So, specifically, I want to talk about this. So, this is called the anatomy of light. Here is a 3D representation of a ball illuminated with one light source. So, we see hot spots, we see midtones, we see shadows, um, the shadow's edge as well. Now, what is what precisely? Now, the midtones refer to the middle range of tones in an image, falling between the highlights and the shadows. These areas of an image typically contain the most detail and can greatly affect the overall mood and look and feel of an image. Now, one particular interest um, or something that should interest you is that of the hotspot, otherwise known as specular highlights, now, hotspots are areas in an image that are significantly, sorry, significantly brighter than that of the surrounding areas. These areas can draw the viewer's attention and can be used to highlight certain elements of the scene as well. Now, the next part would be that of the shadow's edge. The shadow edge refers to the boundary between the shadow and the lit area of an image. This area can be um, sharp or gradual depending on the lighting setup or in other words what lighting modifiers that you use and can greatly be used to um, create depth and dimension in an image. And lastly the shadows, which should be obvious, the shadows are the areas in an image that receive little to no light whatsoever resulting in a darker tone. They can be used to create contrast or to add drama to an image. The darkness of the shadows can be controlled by using um, by altering the intensity and the direction of a light source, also the lighting modifier as well as the position of the light source relative to your subject. I also want to talk about contrast. Now, in photography, contrast refers to the difference between the brightest and the darkest areas of an image. A high contrast image will have greater differences between the lightest and the darkest areas. With low contrast, as you can see here on the right-hand side, uh, those will have uh, very small differences between the darkest and the brightest areas. And contrast can, can be used to create the following. So it can be used to um, alter the tone and drama of an image. Well, drama, I mean, you can add a sense of drama to an image. Um, so depending on how you use and distribute your light, you can add that high contrast or low contrast. The reason I bring all of this up is because all of these are vital in understanding light, generally speaking, and how we go about shaping our subject. It also plays a huge role in deciding which light, light, sorry, light modifier we want to use. So something we can explore, well, something that we'll definitely explore in today's presentation when it comes to umbrella specifically. So here's a quick look at the differences between the main um, 
umbrellas. By main umbrellas, I mean the shoot for umbrella, the white reflective, and the silver reflective umbrella. All right, so just to give you a bit of a heads up as to what the differences may be, you know, as far as using a 3D ball at least is concerned, um, you can see some of the differences right there in terms of how they affect uh, the midtones, the hotspots, the contrast, the shadows, and the shadow's edge. But we'll explore that in greater detail as we go along. All right, so first up, we're going to chat about the shoot-through umbrella versus the reflective umbrella. So here you can see examples of which. On the left-hand side, that's the shoot-through umbrella. On the right-hand side, that is a reflective umbrella. So shoot-through umbrellas and reflective umbrellas are the two common types of photographic umbrellas used to modify the quality of light in your image. The main differences between the two are... Sorry, you may be hearing some growling in the background. That's my dog sitting behind me. So the dog is obviously upset about something, but you know, I hope you don't <laughs> mind a little bit of growl growling in the background. That's not me, that's just a dog. <laughs> All right, so as mentioned, here are the main differences between shoot-through umbrellas and reflective umbrellas. So in terms of light diffusion, a shoot-through umbrella is designed to allow light to pass through the translucent material of the umbrella and onto the subject, creating a soft and different a reflective umbrella, on the other hand, is designed to reflect light back onto your subject, creating a more, a more direct and focused light. We can also talk about its directional control. With a shoot-through umbrella, the direction of the light source is less controlled. That's very important. So it's a bit of a nuclear bomb of light, in a manner of speaking. So the light is passed through the um, diffusion material, but some of the light goes forward, it goes backwards, it goes sideways. So if you're working in a confined space, uh, the light is just going to bounce everywhere. So you have a vast amount of uncontrolled light. Whereas with a reflective umbrella, the light is more so controlled, the light is going in the direction as intended. So here's another important aspect, that being light output. So reflective umbrellas tend to produce a higher output of light compared to shoot-through umbrellas. So if you're using low-powered lighting, such as fluorescent lighting or low-powered LED lighting, your best bet is to go with reflective umbrellas, especially silver reflective umbrellas, as they do a better job to maintain the overall intensity of light. So if you use a shoot-through umbrella with low-powered lighting, um, you're going to end up losing a lot of light, because some of that light is going in the wrong direction. All right, so how you use the two, we can chat about that as well. So with a shoot-through umbrella, um, you need to shoot your light through the material, hence shoot-through umbrella. So the end tip of the umbrella needs to be pointing at your subject, as you can see here. So the light is passing through the material of the umbrella, and that material will end up diffusing and spreading your light to create a far more softer and um, diffused light. Here you can see another example of it. So with the light passing through that translucent material. Now let's look at the reflective umbrella, shall we? So light goes in and reflects back into the opposite direction. So with these umbrellas, the end tip needs to be pointing away from your subject. So you can see light going into the umbrella and reflecting back onto your subject. So the umbrella, the tip of it, should I say, should be pointing away from your subject. Here we can see another example of it and some real world images. So again, utilizing Carmen, my mannequin head, always useful. Here you can see an example of the shoot-through umbrella with the light passing through the material and onto our subject. And here with the reflective umbrella with light shooting into it and reflecting back out of it onto our subject. All right, so if you're still watching, as a reminder, if you have any questions to ask, Please do drop them in the comment section and we'll tackle them as we go along. All right, so in terms of the, um, the spreadality or the directionality of the light source, um, here you can see with a reflective umbrella that the light is going in the intended direction. So the reflective umbrellas have had black backing, so that is designed to prevent light from going into the wrong direction. Whereas with a shoot for umbrella, As you can see, light is just going everywhere. And ironically, 
um, most of the light is going fed into the wrong direction. It's going backwards. Yeah, so this is why some people don't like using that shoot through umbrella because it's an inefficient light source. By inefficient, what I mean is light is just going everywhere and some of the light um, may just bounce off walls and ceilings and it may interfere with your overall lighting plan. All right, so let's look at some studio results, shall we? So here we can see an image created using a bare bulb. Bare bulb meaning no light modifier was used. Here we can see how harsh the light is in terms of the hard shadows and the increased hot spots as well. Now, by simply using a shoot through umbrella, we can see how soft the quality of light is now. The shadow edges are nicely diffused and the hot spots are more so suppressed and diffused as well. So generally speaking, shoot through umbrellas serve a purpose in terms of softening the light, a far more pleasing, flattering, um, diffused quality of light as opposed to a bare flash. Here we can see a side by side comparison between bare flash and shoot through umbrella. And we can see what a big difference that makes in terms of the quality of light. Okay, now let's talk about the differences between shoot through umbrellas and reflective umbrellas, or should I say, let's continue this conversation. Now, shoot through umbrellas tend to provide a softer quality of light, albeit an uncontrolled light. Um, but the light tends to be more so flattering. Reflective umbrellas provide a more so focused, slightly harsher quality of light uh, with increased contrast and specularity. So just to reiterate, shoot through umbrellas tend to create a softer quality of light. And silver reflective umbrellas here in particular, you can see how focused that light is in terms of its specularity. You can see the increased hot spots. You can see a bit of extra quote unquote life in the image. So the image tends not to be as flat as you can see with the shoot through. All right, so which one to choose? Now overall, the choice between a shoot through umbrella and a reflective umbrella depends on the photographer's creative vision. So depending on what you want, you know, that's obviously, or should I say that is often <laughs> the um, answer to many photographic questions. It all depends on what you want. Um, so depending on the specific needs of a shoot, you're going to need to choose between shoot through umbrella or silver reflective umbrella here as an example. Shoot through umbrellas are better for creating a soft, diffused light, while reflective umbrellas are better for creating a far more focused and directional light. All right, so you can see the big differences between the two. Shoot through umbrella tends to be a little bit flatter, not as contrasty as what you can see with a silver reflective umbrella, but the light tends to be quite soft. Whereas with a silver reflective umbrella, you can see the added contrast, which is nice in terms of adding shape and dimension to your subject, um, but tends to be a little bit harder. All right, so let's talk about reflective umbrellas, shall we? And here you can see examples of such. So we're going to talk about gold, silver, and white. All right, so... Here we can see, broadly speaking, the differences between a lot, but I'll show you some examples just now. So white, silver, and gold reflectives are commonly used in photography as light modifiers to soften and control the intensity of light. So here are the differences between a, between a lot. So here we can see an image using a white reflective umbrella. Now, white reflective umbrella is the most common and versatile type of umbrella. It produces a soft and even light that is well suited for portrait photography and other types of photography where a more so natural looking light is desired. A white fabric allows the light to be diffused and spread out, resulting in less contrast and softer shadows. Here we can see the silver reflective umbrella. So a silver reflective umbrella is a bit more reflective than the white one, producing a brighter and more so focused um, quality of light. It is often used in commercial, product photography, and fashion photography, where more specular and high contrast light is desired. The silver fabric reflects more light back onto your subject, resulting in more contrast and sharper shadows. If you are using low power lighting, as mentioned before, um, I would highly advise using silver reflective umbrellas. As I said, they maintain the overall intensity of the light just a lot better. So in other words, you won't end up losing as much light as opposed to using white reflective or shoot-through umbrellas. 
And here, the cold reflective umbrella obviously adds a bit of a yellow golden hue to our subject. So it produces a warm and glowing light, similar to the light of a sunset, or should I say a candle as well. It is often used in portrait and fashion photography to add warmth and depth to skin tones. So it does reflect quite well off various types of skin tones. The gold fabric reflects a warmer color temperature um, of light back onto our subject, resulting in a golden or amber colored light that adds a pleasing effect to the image. Okay, my battery just died, but you can still hear me. I'll change battery in a few moments. But as I said, you can still hear me. All right, so you may be curious as to the differences between silver and white. So I'll just pop these two right next to one another. So you can see with a silver, that just adds or emphasizes specularity. Now, in case you're wondering about that word specularity, that's just a fancy word for hotspots or highlights. So you can see the increased highlights generally across the entire subject. A good way of looking at it and this is why fashion photographers love using the silver reflective umbrella. So the silver reflective umbrella adds that specularity, as you can see in the jacket here, um, how those highlights tend to pop just a little bit more. So using the silver reflective umbrella, we can see how the texturing and the dimension of clothing tends to just pop, just to, um, it's just that added dimension to the image. Okay, so with the white, we can see how generally flat the image is, as opposed to the silver, we can see that added specularity, and that just adds that extra bit of pop to an image, in a manner of speaking. All right, so in short, white, silver, and gold reflective umbrellas are popular light modifiers used in photography. White umbrellas produce a soft and even light, ideal for portrait and natural looking photography, Silver umbrellas provide a brighter and more focused um, quality of light, suitable for commercial and fashion photography that requires high contrast light. Gold umbrellas create a warm and glowing light, perfect for adding warmth and depth to skin tones in portrait and fashion photography. Um, and the choice between these umbrellas, you know, largely of course, depends on what the desired lighting effect you want in your image. So yeah, so in terms of which is better to use, as often is the case in photography, that depends on what you want to create. All right, so I'm just going to pause a little bit. I'm just going to change batteries. Um, so that may take a minute or two, so please don't go away. I'm just going to mute my mic. So just give me a minute. I'm going to change batteries. Uh, 
Oh gosh, seem to be having technical difficulties with the camera, but I think we can proceed. At least you guys can still hear me. It's unfortunately, no visuals from my side, but yeah, I think we can press on. All right, so apologies for that. As I said, show must go on. All right, so let's talk about softboxes versus umbrellas, shall we? So softboxes and umbrellas are both popular lighting modifiers used in photography and videography to soften and diffuse the light emitted by a light source. While both are effective at softening the light, there are some um, several differences uh, as to how they differ. All right, so in terms of the quality of light, softboxes, generally speaking, provide a softer quality of light. Softboxes are double diffused, hence provide a softer light. Now, in terms of shape, softboxes are typically square or rectangular, but you do have octoboxes available as well, while umbrellas are only round or octagonal. So in terms of reflections, especially when it comes to glossy or reflective objects, square and rectangular softboxes create a far more natural looking reflection. I'll show you what that looks like just in a little bit. Now, in terms of light control, this is very important. Softboxes offer far more control over the directionality and spread of light whereas umbrellas tend to scatter light in a far more omnidirectional pattern. A big difference between the two is that of portability. Umbrellas are often um, far more portable and easier to set up as opposed to softboxes, making them a popular choice for location shoots. However, if you have a folding softbox, that can work brilliantly for on-location shoots as well. Now, umbrellas are generally less expensive than softboxes, making them a far more budget-friendly option. Right, so to iterate, softboxes um, provide far more control and direction over your light, whereas umbrellas tend to scatter light um, here and there and everywhere. Um, in terms of budget, umbrellas typically less expensive than that of softboxes, and softboxes tend to be a little bit softer as far as the quality of light is concerned as well. And here we can see the differences between a shoot through umbrella and an 80 by 120 centimeter softbox. So here, for comparing the two, um, as you can see, the results are actually very similar. Now, to my eagle eye, I can see that the softbox creates a slightly more contrasty results. Um, so in terms of the shadows and highlights, you can see more differences there. Um, so you can see the shadows tend to be a little bit darker with the um, softbox, so hence creating a bit more dimension and depth to your image. There's also a reason why people prefer using softboxes because as you can see with the shoot through umbrella, you know, the uh, results tend to be just a little bit flatter. Now, however, comparing the two, well, one is 200 Rand and the other is more than a thousand Rand. Uh, would you say that one is much better than the other? Well, I think I'm gonna leave that up to you. Myself, personally, I've always enjoyed using softboxes, but the shoot through umbrella is always a great plan B option. So I always carry a couple with me in case something happens to the softbox, um, you know, which can happen. Um, but sometimes the softbox, you know, that can be a pain to set up as well. So often I use the umbrellas, you know, just to set up quickly and to get the shot quickly as well. Now, an area where softboxes make a massive difference is that in product photography and in still life photography, especially when shooting glossy and reflective products. So you can have a look at this. So we have a softbox on the left-hand side and an umbrella on the right-hand side. So as you can see with a softbox, that creates a far more natural, sorry, natural and intuitive type of reflection, a reflection that helps to shape the um, shape of our object that we shot here. So whereas with umbrellas, we can see that it's created a very nasty reflection. So not very pleasant to look at um, that right-hand image. Whereas the left-hand, you can see that the reflection looks more like, well, one can say window light. So it's a bit more natural in terms of that reflection that it created on the um, object here. And here I just moved the light around. So here from more front on, so let me just say with this image, the light was directly 90 degrees with the subject. So literally right next to the um, bottle here. And in this image, it was a bit more front on, 45 degrees. You can see how nasty that reflection of the umbrella is. Now that's not pleasant and that would require a lot of editing and just to make it a little bit more pleasing. But with the um, softbox, at least it looks a bit more natural, a bit more pleasant. 
And here the light was positioned behind the subject, 45 degrees, so acting like a bit of a rim light. Um, far more pleasing on the left-hand side with a softbox, whereas with the right-hand side, not only does it create that nasty reflection, but you can see the nature of the umbrella is that it is spreading light everywhere. So a lot of that light is going onto our backdrop. And it's not precisely what I wanted, but yeah, that is the consequences of using an umbrella. Light just goes everywhere. Whereas on the left-hand side with a softbox, it prevents light spillage, it prevents light from spilling onto the background. Right, so adding a bit more darkness to the background, obviously creating a bit more contrast in the image, allowing our subject just to pop a little bit more. All right, so that is the end of my presentation. Um, I'm going to try and get my visuals back. Hopefully things kick into action now. Otherwise, you guys are still with me, so if you have any questions to ask, please do so in the comments section. So I'm still here. You may not see me, but I am here. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think um, yeah, my visuals are dead for the night. So again, sorry about that, but I can still answer your questions. So if there are any couple of points that you want me to elaborate on further, if you have any questions, do pop that into the uh, comment section. This is why we do these things live, is to interact with you guys. What's up, Jay? Nice to see you here as always. Thank you so much. I've always used umbrellas. Thanks for the information. Yeah, umbrellas are quite nifty. Um, I think with softboxes excel, as I mentioned, you know, typically with your product photography and still life photography. But as you can see here in the slideshow, let me just get that back. And would you say that the 1,000 Rand softbox is much better, like 100 times better than that of a 200 Rand umbrella? I don't think so. So yes, the shoot through umbrella certainly has its uses. Um, it's only for getting that extra bit of contrast from the light, getting that deeper shadows, adding that depth and dimension. Yes, the softbox is definitely better for it. But otherwise, the shoot for umbrella, I think, did a good job in its own right. Sorry, did I say softbox? Shoot for umbrella, I meant. Okay, bought my first softbox today at Camera Stuff. Awesome. Which softbox is it, sir? And tell me in the comments which softbox you bought. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reiterate a couple of points just to make sure that everybody is on the same page. I think this is a very important one. The comparison between the white reflective umbrella and the silver reflective umbrella. So as mentioned, in terms of the specularity, uh, that being the hotspots, we can see, um, sorry, see that the silver reflective umbrella just added a bit more pop in terms of the highlights. So you can see it's a, did I say shinier image? I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, definitely with the silver reflective umbrella, you get that added specularity. Um, you know, that just creates a bit more uh, depth and dimension as opposed to the left-hand side. As you can see with the white reflective umbrella, it just looks a little bit flatter, generally speaking. Now, yes, that's softer, that is multi-purpose, that's versatile. Um, you know, so if you don't know who you're shooting on a day, a white reflective umbrella may be a good choice. Yeah, but just in terms of that added depth and dimension, the silver does a spectacular job. Also, in terms of fashion and clothing, that silver just helps to add depth to the clothing, the texturing of the material. Um, in terms of the specularity, you can see it just adds a bit of pop. And again, when you compare that to the left-hand side with the white reflective umbrella, it just tends to flatten out the image ever so slightly. All right, so the gold reflective umbrella, and this is a fascinating choice. Um, I tend not to use a gold reflective umbrella because you know, in Photoshop, I can add a bit of warmth. I can add a bit of uh, warmness to the image if it's so much using. Um, you know, so I tend to go with a more neutral color. What the gold reflective umbrella is awesome for, however, is um, if you want to use it as a rim light. So if you want to add that golden accent down the side of your subject, just to create a bit of a, a sunset or sunrise type of effect, uh, that is good for compositing work as well. So if you have a backdrop with a rising sun or setting sun in the background, um, you can 
recreate that type of light in studio by using a gold reflective umbrella placed behind the subject, aimed at the subject. So as mentioned, it will create that nice little accent down the edges of your subject. Okay, got our question here. Between white and silver, which one is best for street photography? Um, it depends on what you want to capture on a day. Now, so there's no best one here. As often as the case in photography, it all depends on what you want to create. So um, typically, I would, I would lean towards silver. But if you are playing it safe in terms of creating a soft light, then white will be better. Now, so silver is great for adding that extra specularity, um, adding texture and depth to clothing. Um, but yeah, so it all just depends on what you want to create on a day. Now, so unfortunately, there's no right answer here. Um, I think, as mentioned, if you want to play it safe and create a nice soft light in white reflective umbrella, if you want to spark it up a little bit, then you can use the silver. All right, so Sean answering his question, or my question. Uh, the flash in the softbox doesn't flash back into the softbox, but it's going through. So I'm using the SPGUE, we call it the GUI softbox. Yeah, so those are very popular. Um, those are the Godox folding softboxes. Um, yeah, so similar to the Schufer umbrella, the light passes through the material to create a nice soft and diffused and evenly spread light. So you definitely made a good choice there. Also, it being a folding softbox, that's just awesome to use on location as well because the softbox is just easy to set up and to uh, dismantle. So it's good for travel, it's good for storage as well. So you made a very, very good choice there. Yeah, so um, softboxes, better than umbrellas, but it is often difficult to justify the price difference. I think when it comes to product photography, um, and creating super duper soft light. Yes, the softbox does win. But I think I'm just going to show you this image again because this image does fascinate me, fascinates me so much. Yep, with 200 Rand shoot for umbrella versus the 1200 Rand softbox. Yeah, so personally, I always carry that shoot for umbrella with me as a plan B option. Yeah, they do good enough in terms of softening the light. It's just often in confined spaces in very small studios, the light may bounce everywhere. Um, something I should have mentioned is that because the light bounces everywhere, that light may bounce back into your camera, into your lens, and it may create a bit of lens flare. That happened to me a couple of times. Um, so this is something to be mindful of when using a shoot-through umbrella. Some of that light may bounce back into your camera and create a bit of haziness and a bit of lens flare. So it's just something to be careful with. All right, so I think I... I'm at the end of my presentation, unless you guys have any more questions to ask. So yes, it would have been great to see my face, I suppose, but again, apologies, <laughs> my visuals are not working today. I'll try and correct that for the next live. Um, but yeah, unless you guys have any other questions, I think that's going to be it from my side. So I'm going to give it a minute or two. So if there's something else you'd like me to elaborate on, if you have any other questions not pertaining to umbrellas or softboxes, I can definitely, well, you have me. You have me here. So make use of me while you have me. <laughs> All right. So how does an umbrella softbox compare to an umbrella? Okay, unfortunately, I didn't have an umbrella softbox with me. Um, but the umbrella softbox is like a reflective umbrella, but with a diffusion material placed in front. So the Umbrella Softbox will provide the similar qualities in terms of directionality of the light, but with a bit of a shoot-through umbrella effect. What I mean by that is the light will tend to be quite soft as well, much softer as opposed to an open umbrella. So if you want the directionality of a reflective umbrella, but the softness of a shoot-through umbrella, then the Umbrella Softbox is an excellent choice. I think very underrated, the Umbrella Softbox is about 400 Rand, 450 Rand, um, very awesome to use. Um, easy to set up, um, easy to pack away, easy to travel with, um, and it provides an awesome quality of light. So maybe I can find a picture of that. I'm going to have to search on my PC now. All right, just give me a moment.
Ah, should have the picture here somewhere. Almost have it. Sorry, just give me a moment. Okay, found it. Let me just open it. Yeah, here it is. It's gonna pop on screen now. Let's give it a moment. Come on. Yeah, yeah, here it is. So this is an example of the umbrella softbox. So it has the same design as the reflective umbrella, but it has the front cover or the fuser cover at front. So um, what you need to do is to place your light the light source inside of the umbrella softbox. So you can see the flash tube is positioned inside, so the light will bounce in the reflective um, material and back outwards, but through that diffusion material. Yeah, so as mentioned, um, this does the same as a reflective umbrella in terms of its directionality and control, but because you have that diffuser, it just does a wonder in terms of softening the light as well. There's a bit of a two-in-one product, so it's like a reflective umbrella, but will give you the same qualities as a shoot-through umbrella. There's a different one I wanted to show you as well. Yeah, it's this one. All right, so this is also an umbrella softbox, but this is a shoot-through umbrella with a black backing. So with that black backing, what you, um, what that is designed to do is to block light from going into the wrong direction. So this is a shoot-through umbrella, but with that black backing, it prevents light from going backwards. So in terms of controlling the light, this is like a shoot-through, but you don't get that um, nuclear bomb effect where light just goes everywhere. So also a very good choice if you want more control over your shoot-through umbrella. These are two-in-one, so you can take that black backing off. Um, so if you want light to go everywhere, <laughs> that's, if you're inclined to do that, you can do that. Um, but by keeping that black backing on, that just prevents light from going in the wrong direction. So that's called a shoot-through brolly box or an umbrella softbox as well. Um, so you can see what that looks like from the back. Yeah, so it has that black cover at the back. So that just prevents light from going in the wrong direction. So that is called a brolly box. And um, we do sell them at camera stuff as well. So similar to the shoot-through umbrella, but far more controlled. All right, so thank you for your question. Hopefully that answered it. Um, yeah, so the umbrella softbox um, yeah, just helps to control the light just a lot better as opposed to a open umbrella. So the light goes precisely where you want it to go. All right, so let me look at any other questions. Don't see anything. Okay, so I think that's going to be it from my side. Thank you for joining. Um, this is me, Conrad. Um, you can't see me. Again, I apologize for that. Um, it's a little bit embarrassing. So my visuals don't work tonight, but it will work next time. Uh, and yeah, we'll figure out the topic. So Maybe if you want to learn about something specific, do drop us a message and we'll make sure to you know, do some live presentations about that as well. So until then, this is me, Conrad, on behalf of Camera Stuff, signing off. Hope you have a pleasant night further. Bye-bye.